But we have got a great friend joining us right now. He's been on the sofa many times in the past. Chris Woodcock is with us. Nice to see you, Chris. Nice to see you again. Yeah. So, well, we always know that when you're here, we're going to get some expert advice um, right. because you work for Planet Cruise, don't you? You're one of the guys on the phones, aren't you? That's it. I'm the one that you're speaking to every single day. I, uh, I take your calls. I book you. I uh, sort out your excursions. Everything you want, I'm there for you. Well, and, and I know sometimes, you know, we, well, you will always get like, many new viewers that are booking a cruise for the first time and they're a little bit hesitant, a little bit nervous. Because Planet Cruise are independent, you're going to find the right cruise for that, that viewer, that person, aren't you? Exactly. We don't have any allegiance to uh, any particular cruise line, so we can really look at the whole gamut and see what's perfect for you. And, um, Chris, you've got an amazing deal tonight, haven't you? You've got two deals. Yes. <laughs> but this first one, and it's one of the best that we've seen, um, two weeks, is that right? Two weeks, and the price is incredible. Under <laughs> £800? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And we're not talking out of season. That price is for the... Date here, my word, the 8th of July. Mid-season, you would not expect that price. 799 is... Wow. It's crazy. And we're guaranteed <laughs> amazing weather because we're taking you over to the Canaries on this one as well. Exactly. Wow. Um, so two weeks, 8th of July is a lead d a date there, a price of under £800. Um, and if you have the later dates, it's just a deposit only as well. But should we take you on board? Um, because this is with P&O, isn't it? Right, the original uh, cruise line company. They, they go back uh, hundreds of years themselves. And this is uh, one of the smaller of the ships, the Oriana. It's the latest ship to become adults only. So, uh, you know, nice to get on board and, and see families enjoying themselves, but also nice to have that quiet time as well. And this is what Oriana's all about. So even though this will take us into July when kids, some kids might be off school, this is an adults only cruise. Is that right, right? So yeah. nice quiet cruise, relaxing, and you've got all that time to explore as well. Uh, so there's only 1,800 guests on board. Uh, the food is really uh, special in this place. Uh, you've got the Lord's Tavern, which is a, a lovely uh, bar there just to watch the sports. Uh, special to uh, p and is Marco Pierre White's Ocean Grill that you're seeing right there. It's a special restaurant, really only about £12.50 for the cover charge. And it's really? really cheap. Yeah, it's super cheap for, for the quality you get. Uh, Tiffany's Coffee and Lounge Bar, uh, and you've got the, uh, the, the Real, Royal Theatre there, the Headliners Theatre Company. Uh, they're exclusive to P&O, they're their in-house production company, and they put on these amazing West End shows that you're seeing there, along with uh, guest entertainers that they bring along through the cruise as well. There's no short of entertainment I, on board. And with P&O, um, you know, the entertainment is very British, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole company has a real British yeah. feel. And if if uh, you're looking for something a little familiar, then that's a nice feeling to, to be on board with like-minded people and, and people you know you can you can get to know. And um, I was just thinking about some of the, the entertainment. I you know there was a great British comedian when I was on board, and you know it was just it's such a good experience. And when you look at the price, it works out four hundred pounds a week for July. Right. With all of that great entertainment, that great... That's really good, Keith, isn't it? It's an amazing Yeah, deal. Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah. And, as, and as Chris says, you know, 177 years they've been taking people around the world, so they know what they're doing and they'll, they'll give you a yeah. great cruise. That's more than us three put together, isn't it? it is. Well, nearly. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know you're going to talk us through, aren't you, Chris? Um, first right. of all, cruising from Southampton, what are the benefits of that? You can literally park right at the terminal building. You can walk across the path and you're there at the check-in desk. And your luggage, so you might not realise this, but your luggage is taken you know, from you the moment you arrive and the next time you see it, it's outside your stateroom. Right, and, and in you, Southampton, you, you're yeah. not lugging around, you know, your suitcases and things like that. Right, and same through Southampton City. The station's right there, the port's right there. Yeah, you know, it's so easy. so easy. You know, no, no messing around in airports. So, you're on board straight away. Your luggage is taken care of. Two first days at sea, and we're making our way over to Lisbon, aren't we? Right. Lisbon is one of my favourite cities in the Mediterranean, along with Barcelona that you know I love. Uh, when you sail in and out, you're going to be going right underneath the 25th of April bridge, uh, which, I mean, literally clears the top of the ship by a few feet. You're seeing it coming up in just a second. There it is. Uh, definitely get your cameras out for that moment. When you dock into Lisbon, you're right there in the centre of the city. Uh, make sure you go to Belem Tower, which is just around the corner. Obviously, uh, at the gateway into um, uh, Portuguese uh, River there, secured for the uh, World War II. San George Castle, UNESCO Heritage Site, 11th century, former royal residence. And while you're there, the, the shopping is absolutely incredible. Uh, one of my favourite places to shop, and definitely go and buy the uh, the natas, which is the uh, custard pastries. A uh, little tip from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something Keith would tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the custard tarts. Yeah, yes. tart. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> We're next in Dead Sea, isn't it? Then we move on to Agadir, Morocco. 
uh, down into North Africa. So you're not just staying in Europe, you're heading into another continent as well. Uh, this is the gateway to Marrakesh. As you can imagine, plenty of shopping in the souks, palaces, gardens galore. Uh, definitely try and head into Marrakesh on that day, you won't be disappointed. Uh, and then Lanzarote. Lanzarote, I mean, speaks for itself, you know, uh, beaches, gorgeous town, uh, the black sandy beaches of the Canary Islands, of course, there's a volcanic island, well, the whole uh, of the Canaries are volcanic, so the landscape is really dramatic, and uh, of course, Tenerife is, uh, is just as good as well. Popular tourist destination, so you can imagine there's lots of things to do throughout uh, both of these port days. Uh, you've got the, the, the scenic tours, you've got the, the shopping in the, in the towns, plenty to do. And, and guaranteed outstanding weather. Of course, yeah. No. I mean, the, the uh, temperature never really gets below 20 the whole year round. So even if you don't go for that July date, you've got November, February, it's going to be sunny whenever and, you go. And Tenerife is really beautiful, isn't it? You know, I, I never yeah. realised it. I mean, I actually um, hired a car one day and explored the island. It's fantastic. Right. as well. Yeah. The highest mountains. You've got the whole national park there that you can enjoy. It's incredible. Now, one of the, the, the islands that we don't see as much of is next, isn't it? La Palma. La Palma, right. It's, the, it's actually the fifth largest island for the Canaries. It's, uh, it's a volcanic ridge that sticks out in the ocean. Uh, the Cumbre Vieja, I don't know if you've heard of that, but that's uh, a region found in La Palma. So great to kind of explore the wilderness, really rugged terrain, uh, get lost in the, uh, the uh, mountain climbs there, get, you know, explore nature, get, get a one with nature. I'd say and you were saying, Keith, it's, you know, it's a lot less developed, isn't it, La Palma? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's much more like stepping back into the Canaries 20, 30 years yeah. ago. And it's known for being very green, full of rolling pine forests, great for hikers. So if you, if you love nature, uh, you know, not necessarily being a naturist, but if you love nature, then you will love this island. <laughs> and and then, um, a really quite a rare island. When I say rare, it's one we very rarely see, La Gomera. This is one of the smaller islands in yeah. the Canaries. In fact, there's only 21,000 inhabitants on the island. Really? One little quote I found today, actually, which I really like, is the land that mass tourism forgot. How nice is that? Uh, you know, you're going to Tenerife, you're going to Lanzarote, all of these touristy places that you see on every destination, but La Gomera, La Palma, you're not going to find them on many, and it's a nice chance to get off the beaten track and explore places that not many people have seen. And then one of my favourite places, Madeira, because I love gardens, I, you know, I love plants, and Madeira has the most outstanding botanical life, doesn't it? Right, considering these are all so close together, Funchal is actually subtropical, so you do get uh, uh, lots of wildlife there that you wouldn't see anywhere else, lots of uh, plants that are exclusive to Funchal Madeira. Uh, the most picturesque place out of all these ports, I would say. Uh, you just want to go to the botanical garden that you're seeing right yeah. there. I mean, look at that, it's incredible. They really maintain it. Now, Chris, well. I want to talk about you've got three final days at sea, and you know, some of my friends often say to me, oh, you know, how do you find the days at sea? You know, are you bored? The, you know, the complete opposite. There is so much to do on those sea days, isn't there? Absolutely not. The staff work so hard on board. You've got full-time full entertainment staff. The service staff are there to help you all day long. Really, 24-hour service. Uh, you, yeah, I mean, I'm not being funny, but I would think, what would you do on a land holiday? You'd sit around the pool, wouldn't you, all day long? And you'd have one bar, one restaurant. You know, that's There it. might be some aerobics by the pool. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's that's not about it, isn't it? Yeah, it, I mean, there's so much to do that we could talk about it for hours. Yeah, so, you know, you will love the days at sea. Endless entertainment, great food throughout the day, lots of things happening, and, you know, I love the sea days. And there are, yes, yeah, some, sometimes I will just sunbathe for a few hours and things. And there's yeah. often a lot of fun stuff on the sea days. So you, you look, the best things in the program yeah. to look for things like the ice carving or fruit and vegetable carving, which kind of sound a bit kind of silly, <laughs> but they're really, really fun yeah. because you're going to see the guys yeah. really, really working hard, making it talented. Flower arranging classes as well and little things like this where they get special guest speakers. You were very good at that. Guest artists. Case. Oh, I'm, I'm, I can arrange a, <laughs> a, a bouquet anytime. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's nice about it is that you get to see the personalities of the crew while they're doing that's, it. They that's that's yeah. good to do it, absolutely. Get to know those crew um, members and see their skills. Now, on mm. a serious note, we know this one is going to really, really go quickly today. It really is. You know, mm. to get two weeks away, 799 with a company as great as, as P&O is incredible. Let's just remind you of everything that is included on this one. It's under £800 today. The lead date is the one that's 799 by the way, the 8th of July. Ships will vary in itineraries depending on the dates that you go for, but that lead date, 8th of July, on the adults only, Oriana there, is 799 I, I would definitely do this. You're away for two weeks. We could... Put you up the night before in the Mean Valley Marriott in Southampton. That would only cost you £75 per person. Then you've got two weeks free parking and you return port transfers. What would two weeks parking cost you think now in 
So well, let me you know tell you, because I've, I've just looked into this, I've looked into a week's parking, and the cheapest I managed to find it for a week's parking was um, £70. So for two weeks, you're looking at you're looking at double that, so about £140. So, and you haven't stayed overnight? No, and, and you haven't had your transfer, you know, your transfer to the yeah. port and back, nor have you had that wonderful night. It's a half-price offer, that, as well, Sean. Wow. It's an ongoing half-price offer. And they if really you, do look after Planet Coast customers, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. If you're coming down from the north, you've got to be checking in at 12pm, so you've got no time. You know, you've got to be waking up super early to get down there, so that night in the hotel is really saving you some well, stress. Well, you start your yeah. holiday a day earlier, don't you? Yeah, I'm you doing do. that. I'm doing that on Friday night with my dad before we get on on Saturday. All so. right, so if you're in there, if you're uh, in the uh, Me and Valley on Friday night, say hello to our kids. Come on, come on buy yeah. me a drink, absolutely. Yeah, yeah please. He right. <laughs> look, looks a lot slim in real life, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, deposit only, by the way, uh, as you mentioned, the itineraries and ships vary. These yourself. are the prices. Uh, it's 7 dollars for the 8th of July and also the 31st of October there. And actually, great prices across the board there. ID number there is 87748.